embrace its academic and professional reputation that has trained over 15,000 professionals in 10 years. Embrace it marks numerous professional programs from HND to BTEC, BSc, and MBA in the schools of business and management sciences, engineering and technology, and the school of transport and logistics. Embrace Hitman's professionalism, excellence, and consistency with solid mentorship from the University of Bamenda and the University of Boya. Embrace Hitman's skills, development, expertise, and career orientation via workshops and academic field trips. Be part of the Hitman family. Visit our Boya campus at Checkpoint Moliko and Duala campus at Karofu Yoro. Joss Bonamusali. Contact 683-70-1720. The Higher Institute of Business Management and Technology, the University Institute for Professionals. Good evening, televiewers. You welcome to this other edition of Prime R on My Media Prime. We this day are going to be talking agriculture, looking at uh, what it would take to use agriculture to transform lives, so that uh, Cameroonians and Africans as a whole can live lives of uh, prosperity using agriculture and uh, we are going to be using as a case study Afrobrains Cameroon, an agro-industrial uh, structure operating in, Af in Cameroon. We got information of their existence and uh, thought that we should get to them to share their experience and teach Cameroonians how they could use agriculture to make it and uh, change their individual lives, community, as well as national lives. Why not you, uh, changing the lives of uh, Africans as a continent? We are discussing this with um, some uh, staff of uh, Afrobrains Cameroon uh, with headquarters in Yaoundé, I'm sure, uh, Cameroon's capital. We also are going to be discussing with uh, our consultant, uh, Paul Solambe Valentine Guawi is in the house with us to talk agriculture today. We, today we are not talking politics. We either are not talking uh, relationship, we are not talking uh, <laughs> financial, uh, uh, yes, financial empowerment. We are talking agriculture. Our apostle and Valentine Gua, this uh, should be something unique and um, an aspect in our national life that has been neglected for so long. Yes, Mr. Good evening, tell viewers. Good evening, my co-panelists. Good evening, Cameroonians and viewers of Prime Hour. It's always a joy to be here. Uh, this topic is very, very important, and if you have been following my debates, I've always emphasized that every country has its strength, and I can guarantee you the Cameroon we live in, it's, it's, the strength of Cameroon is agriculture. We are depending on so many things that is not a backbone to the Cameroon economy, and since this topic came, I'm very excited because I think I have a lot to contribute. Okay. We also are in the studio with uh, Madame Miranda Ngum. She is a deputy administrative assistant of uh, Afro Brains Cameroon. Uh, good evening and welcome. Good evening. Thank you for inviting me. I want to uh, good evening to all the telespectators. Uh, it's an opportunity for me to be here. It's a pleasure to. How is Afro Brains doing? Afrobrains is doing quite well. There is a lot of prospects ahead. Mm. Mm -hmm. so you are touching our lives? Yeah, we are. there's a lot of prospects that will, prospects that will touch the lives of uh, especially youths and, uh, and women mm. because those are the main people that are involved uh, in, agriculture, in agriculture in Cameroon. In agriculture. Yes, but we are also in the company of Dr. Tata Emmanuel Fon. He is the CEO of Brains uh, Cameroons. He's a Cameroonian automation engineer and an entrepreneur who is uh, actually going to be participating from Shanghai in uh, China. Uh, good evening, Doctor, and welcome. Good evening, Brother Leo, and uh, thank you very much for this uh, opportunity. I'm really, really thankful for uh, for the opportunity that you are giving to us. I want to say uh, greetings to all the other panelists. Uh, I'm, I'm really honored to share this uh, platform to talk about agriculture, which is one of those things that uh, form the pillar of uh, every successful nation. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Yes, I will start with you. Um, you are an automation engineer and entrepreneur, but you are also the brain behind the Afro uh, Brain uh, Cameroon. We I want you to situate us how our capital is agriculture to the Cameroonian African economy. 
Yeah, thank you very much for that uh, very brilliant question. You see, um, every economy, and particularly that of Cameroon, uh, wouldn't want to play with its agricultural sector because if you have to reboot any economy from wherever it finds itself, agriculture will always find itself from where, um, you see, uh, you can always start from. Uh, when, when you find, let's take a typical scenario, you find uh, every month back home in Cameroon, people are get paid salaries. And at the end of the month, you will realize that that same community where people receive salaries from are still going, uh, are still waiting for, for salaries, which means that um, the people don't actually create any value. In order for any community to begin to develop, it has to begin to create values. And those values would be what will cost money to tally in that community, which will finance development. But if a community does not create any value, then that community becomes very, very volatile and very dependent. So Cameroon is no exception. So in Cameroon, we're beginning to look at the possibilities where we can be able to create values by producing, by transforming, by adding value to our natural, uh, to our own uh, agricultural uh, harvest, uh, products so that it can help us to reduce the heavy load of import in agriculture. And when this load on import is, is reduced, of course, money is going to tally within the, the Cameroonian community which will finance uh, development. Yeah, what according to you has been uh, the factor that has not um, permitted Cameroon and other African nations to take full advantage of uh, these uh, important uh, values that agriculture, important position that agriculture could place on uh, our national economies? Is it ignorance? Uh, well, I think, uh, to begin with, I think it, it, it's the educational system uh, in Cameroon. Uh, it's the educational system and the, the uh, perception that has always been around uh, agriculture and farming as a whole. It negates that agriculture or farming is for poor people is what has made agriculture so unpopular. So you realize that the people who probably have some of the capital to invest in agriculture do not have the actors, do not have the intellect, do not have people that the labor which is necessary in order to develop the, the the agricultural industry in Cameroon. Um, you, you, when, when people hear you talk probably about agriculture, they're like, you hit the wall. There's nothing else you can do. That's the reason why you're going to farm. But the, the truth about it is, in the countries that we refer to as developed countries, the richest people there are those who are uh, into agriculture. Someone's, someone once said somewhere that if you want to print money, those cultivate those plants because when you plant you don't harvest the same quantity that you planted so it's an indirect way to print money so our educational system back home in Cameroon has not really played a major role in encouraging young people in making education um, that backbone which is supposed to be in, in financing agricultural projects in being able to support the companies or the initiatives that are developed in the agricultural sector because it is in developing, it is in uh, encouraging, sometimes not even giving these institutions, these companies, these initiatives money directly, but by just creating an enabling environment for them to thrive, for them to express themselves so that others, youth and women and other uh, uh, community actor can see that there is a lot of benefit, there's a lot of profit in engaging in agriculture. Okay. So, but as, as time goes on, it's becoming very popular. Okay, it's becoming very popular. Uh, Apostle Ambe Valentine Ngoa, your reading of the way agriculture has been uh, considered, uh, the position that it has been considered in Cameroon and African economies so far. Yes, sir. Uh I will begin by quoting the president of African Development Bank, who is an agricultural economist at school in Ohio University in America, Kim Umiya Desinia. He said, $25 million is going to be taken from the African Development Bank to 
push into the agricultural sector because agriculture is the market for tomorrow. The future of Africa is in agriculture. He said we import things we are supposed to produce. This is because we do not understand the virtue and the treasure we have. For instance, Cameroon is a miniature of Africa. Almost every crop that grows in the world can be grown in Cameroon. And we have not taken advantage of the climatic condition and the soil we have to exploit that sector. Before I will go into any detail, you will realize that most revolutions in the world started with agricultural revolution. In Britain, we had the agrarian revolution in the 18th century. That was what gave birth to the industrial revolution because a lot of materials were produced, so they needed to transform them. People started thinking out of the produce from farms and then started thinking of giving birth to machines. You discover that Britain came out to be a world power from agriculture. China, we say China is not a technological world. China started cultivating with rice. It was the agricultural sector that gave birth to the technological sector. Russia had the agrarian revolution equally in Russia. Russia equally got through agriculture before now springing forth. We are talking about crop rotation, crop cultivation, and livestock production because agriculture, agriculture in this is not just planting rice, planting cocoa yams, we're talking about breeding of animals and other things. If we see critically, there is no revolution in the world. Look at what is happening right now in Indonesia, the BRIC nations. Indonesia, Malaysia, they have started with agriculture. Give them some years to come. You will see technology will break forth in that area. So agriculture is the bedrock that gives birth to every other revolution because there was the agrarian revolution before the industrial revolution. And if you look at Africa critically or using Cameroon as a case study, there are 10 regions in this country. And these 10 regions have different climatic conditions that can grow different kinds of products. For instance, things like garlic that grow in heated areas like the north. Onion, they grow in heated areas. We import at least 4 billion worth of onion in this country per annum, which is an error which we are not supposed to do because we have the capacity, the climatic condition, the human resource to produce all these things in Cameroon. But why is this area neglected? Go back to the days of Aijo you will discover that there was an, a boom economically because the agricultural sector had a focus. We had different cooperative societies in the Northwest and the Southwest and other places in Cameroon where cocoa buyers, coffee buyers were the ones that determined the price of their products. We had all this kind of like Limbe Cooperative Credit Union, Manfred Cooperative Credit Union, and there was a boom in the economy because the practical sector, which was supposed to be the one to boom the economy, was focused on. Yet this day we are focusing on oil. Cameroon may have oil, but Cameroon's strength is not oil. I think every individual has to play to their strength. If you try to act where your energy is not sufficient, you will fail on the way. Agricultural sector in Cameroon is a, is a sector where if we invest, we won't, it will not be exhausted. North can give us garlic. North can give us onion. North can give us other roots. Northwest, you have all kinds of spices. Cabbage and everything, that's a climatic condition on its own. You come to the southwest, there are different kinds of produce. You go to the east, even in Douala, we see the sun is sandy. Then you put plantain anywhere it grows. I was asking my wife today in the morning, I say, where on earth in this country will you drop a seed without it germinating? Even birds plant. But in other countries, they are going to carry out irrigation process, trying to fertilize the soil, try to mechanize the soil, bring all mechanism into place too. But here, you just need to cough and spit a seed somewhere you will see germinate that is a communication okay we import at least 42 billion worth of pork in this country which is not supposed to be so so if you look at it critically we are not playing to our strength so i i was waiting for this topic i think the government could, we could use this medium to communicate the strength of this country to the government okay uh good evening to you kebuma petit pro uh david and chamba good evening to you ngo stella uh, Natu Emmanuel uh, Ekumbang uh, Fondong Richard, always watching the program. Good evening to you, uh, brother uh, Richard uh, Fondong. But um, from his analysis, can we see very clearly that there are very uh, great opportunities in the agricultural uh, sector in Cameroon which are not ex exploited? Because, for example, he's saying that we, we, we import uh, of, onion. of onion and of pork. Of pork that if we if we focus on there are very many opportunities in agriculture in the country it's exactly exactly he, he raised so many important points and that's the more reason why afro afro brains uh, came in place because we noticed that we we import a lot of foodstuff so we say why not 
transform our own full stop full stuff into finished product instead of relying on the European market and other markets. So Afro 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 brains now decided to use our own uh, our own products. Like what we do is that since we we, we want things that are really food, food crop that are really organic. We don't want to deal with any type of food crop, really organic. So what we do is that we supply them with organic, uh, like we like women groups, we uh, farming groups. We supply them with organic manure, seed. We will help them in uh, with training techniques. So by the time those crops are ready, we get them, we buy them from them, we transform them now. For example, we have uh, we have uh, plantain flour. All we we are we produce Cameroon. We have cassava flour. We have. Uh, we have uh, tomato sauce, we have uh, pepper sauce, we have uh, potato chips, we have granite oil, we have a wide variety. So it's to like fight this, uh, this aspect of importing so much food mm -hmm. that will, that bothers the, the idea, the, the whole concept behind uh, Afro Brains. Afro Brains, where, where, where is it located? Afro Brains is for now is located in Yaoundé, precisely at Bankumo. Mm -hmm. But okay. we but outskirts of, of uh, yeah. Yaoundé before you get to Yaoundé. Before, yeah. yeah, before mm -hmm. you get to Yaoundé. So, but mm -hmm. already we already ha we already have a site where we'll be like a bigger complex for the mm -hmm. factory. Mm -hmm. So that will have uh, that will comprise of offices. We we'll have offices there, a training center mm -hmm. where so many youths will be trained in in agricultural techniques. There are other things involved where machines will they will assemble the machines, small machines for agriculture. Mm -hmm. So uh, what you're saying is that Afrobrains is, so, is, a, is a concept mm -hmm. that thinks that we should um, transform exactly you know, uh, what is being produced in Cameroon in Cameroon and supplied in Cameroon exactly yes and uh, that's the sure way to st to to stop uh, the so much importation yeah. yes. Yes. that you yes. go to the sub supermarket and mm -hmm. get products purely hundred percent Cameroon and at the organic. same time it's organic it's organic. healthy. Yeah. It's organic. Now, you say you provide uh, organic manure to women who are engaged in farming. Yeah. Now, what of uh, persons who may be farming maybe in Munya, Ikona, because uh -huh. there they may also be engaged in organic uh, agriculture, uh, maybe in uh, Santa and the like. How do you, do you deal with them? So yeah, we deal with them. We just need to, we just need to, if, if they are in need, they just have to get in touch with us and then we'll who will, will assist them in so many aspects. Okay, so mm. whoever is engaged in agriculture, whatever you are, and you think that you are providing uh, uh, agricultural products that can be transformed, you should get in touch with these guys of Afro, uh, Afro uh, Brains, Cameroon. But now you transform not everything, eh? you transform cassava, you transform plantains, uh, plantains. Okay, tomatoes. Mm -hmm. There's plantain, there's tomatoes, mm. uh, cassava. Yes, it's cassava. There's even there's even cocoa yams for a chew. Those who you may want to prepare a chew, and then the process is kind of difficult, or or you may not have time. Just with the flour, a chew flour, just you, with the cocoa yams flour, you, you can do. You can your, do a chew. You can do a chew. Wow, well, I would love to. I would, I would love to see. So it. there's so many. There's so many things. So there's even chocolate that's involved. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's even so chocolate that's involved. So so many things are involved in. Uh, Doctor, Doctor um, Fon, I wanted to get to you, but let me get from Doctor Fon. Where did you come uh, from with this, with this vision, this idea? Yeah, excellent question, my brother. Thank you very much. You see, um, if 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 you if you live in Cameroon and you look at the vast opportunities, as uh, my brother in the studio there just mentioned, the richness the agricultural diversity and the fertile soils that we have in Cameroon. And you travel out to other countries and you realize what they can do with the soils that don't even match up with what Cameroon has. You will, you will be motivated to see what you can do about how you can put into use what Cameroon has. You see, um, the whole idea of uh, Alpha Brains comes from the fact that um, being in China for some time, I realized that most of the challenges that uh, we face in Cameroon, especially in the food industry, in agriculture, are very solvable. The solutions are very handy. You don't have to, you know, it's not rocket science. It's pretty straightforward. So I started 
building some of these small machines and looking at how these small machines could impact food cult, not just food cultivation, but also food transformation. I went and did some research to find out, as my brother just mentioned a few uh, seconds ago, the, the, the import volume of Cameroon's food industry. I realized it was just too much and the opportunities were vast. And if I could build these machines, then it, would, it was possible for us to set up something to make other Cameroonians know it's possible that we can also transform food in Cameroon. We can also produce the food that we import. We can do it in Cameroon. It's not that difficult. That's how come I, I thought of the idea of uh, Afro brains. So at Afro brains, we transform all agricultural crops. You see, post-harvest loss has always been an issue. If you remember a couple of years ago, people were committing suicide in Cameroon because of the tomato venture that went south because of COVID. So if we had our factory at the time, what would have happened is we would have absorbed all these tomatoes and transformed into other forms, which would still serve. But because there were very few ventures into food transformation, these tomatoes got wasted and people lost a lot of money. So at our footprint, we can transform from tubers to grains to, um, to, to vegetables. What we do is that we work with the seasons, the harvest season. When we realize that it is a harvest season for a particular product, there is going to be a lot of post-harvest during that time. So we visit the local market and we also talk with the local farmers. We collaborate with them to absorb some of these excesses from the local market and transform into other forms and make available in the market. That way we can solve the issue of post-harvest loss. We are also looking at encouraging local women's groups. We, we, we collaborate with them in a very weak, in a win to win uh, arrangement where we support them, we manure, we support them, we train them, we reach them. It doesn't matter where they are. We are using this platform, if you permit us, to appeal to women's group and anyone who is involved in agriculture, in farming or food cultivation in any way, to get in touch with us so that we can be able to work together and look at the possibility of absorbing the harvest that they have and transforming to other forms. And of course, we will all uh, share the profits that come. Because the, the, the challenge is that in most communities, in most local markets, most of the community members farm the same thing. So during the harvest period, these products meet in the market and there's excess in the market. That is where the post-harvest loss actually generates. But if we can be able to have that relationship with local farmers, where we can reduce that quantity in, in, the, in the local market, then it should be of good use. So we don't only limit ourselves to, um, to the, the crops, we also work with young people who are interested in, in a, the rearing of chickens. We share day old chickens, we have incubators. So we share day old chickens to young people and we try as much as possible to support them because we have byproducts from the factory which can help in the feeding of these chickens. So we support them with feed and those chickens. They just need to have the space so that we can put those chickens there. Okay. And they take care of those chickens. When they are ready, we still buy them and we transform them to other forms and we put, it, we put them in the market. If you look at statistics, which, which had to do with the importation of chicken and fish and all that, you realize that we import so much of that, which is something we can produce locally and transform to, to other forms. It is interesting, my brother, to realize that 65, about 60% of the, the world's arable land is in Africa. And about 60% of Africa is below the age of 25. What this means is that we have the manpower. We have the arable land. But what is the missing link there? And, and guess what? The energy deficit is in Africa is huge. So you realize that there are so many opportunities that people can begin to come to together. Just like we're talking about supporting the local women's group. This local women's group 
form cooperative. That is the best way to operate. Forming small cooperative and working together. We work mostly with the small women's group because through those small cooperatives, those small women's group, it's easier to Okay, Dr. 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 Uh, Dr. Fon, I'll yes. be coming back uh, to you. Good evening to you, Osha Blink BB, and it uh, Gabriel Elung. Uh, Osha is asking why the choice of uh, Yawundi. Uh, we are going to come back to you when I get to you, Dr. Fon. But is this uh, the way to go um, when you listen to Dr. Fon uh, speak? Is this what we are supposed to have started? Uh, 30, 40 years ago? Yes, I think uh, production is in three dimensions. There's a mm -hmm. primary, second, and a tertiary production. Mm -hmm. And you mm -hmm. know, any country that focuses at the primary level does not make any stride. Every country that's focused on the primary level has not made any stride in advancement. Mm -hmm. Cameroon has been at the very primary level, and even in school, where you remember the primary level, your brain is low. So Cameroon is at the primary sector of agriculture, and we cannot make any impact. That's the reason why chocolate or cocoa, being seed, cocoa seed will leave Cameroon, go to Switzerland, we sell a kilo for 1,500, then the chocolate comes back here, we are selling a single portion of that chocolate for 1,700. That is to say we are buying 10 times what we sold. Now, we are selling timber out of Africa as wood. Behind that timber, the back of the wood is medicine to a white man. It's a whole sector on its own, the pharmaceutical company. We have also the wood being transformed. The sawdust is used to make shears back and send to you. You still get that same wood. About 10 products come out of it. I met somebody who is producing nails. And I say, why are you so successful with some producing nails? I say, is it only nail you are doing? He said, it is not the nail business. It's the business of the nail. Then I was asking him, what is the nail business and the business of the nail? He said, the nail business is the production of the nail. The business of the nail is what the nail produces. The powdery substance that comes from that nail is being mixed with other substance to produce what we call anti-rust, which means behind that nail, there are 10 other products. I met a younger man who met me, he's an agro agronomy. He said to me, 300 products can come out of cassava. But we use cassava to cook for food for one minute. Mm -hmm. Once we pound it, we it. are pounding ethanol, we are pounding flour, we are pounding so many things to swallow in one second and then go and defecate it. While somebody takes that cassava, enter into the lab, processes it, while you are selling a tuber of cassava for 500 francs, somebody is producing 20 other things out of that cassava, which means you can take a single cassava and then make 10,000 out of it. So we have a challenge in Africa because we are still at the primary level. And looking at what Afrobrain is coming to with, I think it's a very great initiative because we have that serious challenge here in Africa in processing materials. The reason why the Europeans shifted from agrarian revolution to industrial was because they needed machines to process what they produce. And when they process it, they needed markets. So they began coming to Africa to look for where they would sell their product. That is the actual sense that every agrarian revolution has to give birth to an industrial revolution. How can we be planting crops for the past 30 years and we are eating the same crops and there is nothing? The president of Ghana recently said to the Swiss government that we are not going to be producing or exporting cocoa anymore again in Switzerland. We are going to be producing chocolate in Ghana. There is a young Togolese who traveled to Swiss, studied there, learned how to do the chocolate, and then they wanted to employ him. He refused. He came back to, to Togo, gathered local farmers, and then now he is doing the chocolate, and it comes from Togo. Very quality chocolate. Good chocolate coming from Togo. That is, it has taken the chocolate, the, the cocoa, from the primary level to the secondary level. The price will never remain the same again. And now that definitely increases the gross domestic product and also increases the standard of living of the people. So if at all we don't go to the dimension of what Afro brain is coming by processing what we produce, we're going to be suffering. It is, it is very shocking that you can take a basket of tomato and you sell it for 2,500. But if you process it, you can sell that same basket of tomato for 30,000. Because it is paste. Once they turn it into paste, they will put it in little containers. They say 100, 100, 100 per, 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 per sachet. That thing of a basket can produce even four, 40 to 50 sachets of that container, which is sold for two, five somewhere. But when it is being processed, it can be sold for 5,000, which means we are doubling or tripling the price every time we process materials. The difference between Africa and Europe is primary and secondary. Okay, it's primary and secondary. Uh, Madam uh, Miranda, how can young Cameroonians uh, get full benefit of uh, what you are proposing so that they can also transform their lives? Because uh, like uh, Dr. Fon said, most of the uh, richest persons in most of these countries that we admire today mm -hmm. are making billions out of agriculture. Okay. 
thanks thanks for giving the opportunity because it's very it's a very important topic because we, we really want the youth to be involved but one of the main reasons too for the project too is it really concerns the youth so we are really calling upon them because there's so much work to be done even mm. the products that are are being produced so much marketing has to be done it needs to get to all the 10 regions mm -hmm. so that we will really uh, we really make use of uh, this opportunity by consuming more of our own products so when it gets to all the 10 regions is uh, it's really going to be an amazing thing so we are really encouraging the youth to 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 get in contact with us because we really need them for the marketing at the same time too we are also encouraging them to in, in agriculture has has doctor said that uh, we even for, for for poultry we have incubators so they can provide them even with um, a day a day old chicken they can they can they can raise them and in turn will buy them and transform them and send to the market so the opportunities are there even at the level of uh, the factory the different different departments we have for departments for for tubers for oil for vegetable for salt so at that level too employment is employment so the more the expands, we really need them to, to yeah, expand so if you are, the if, 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 if you are a young Cameroonian with uh, a dream of making it big in agriculture, I think this is a rare opportunity uh, for you. You can get in contact with the guys of Afrobrains Cameroon so that um, they can, we can work in synergy, in partnership to see how they can. You can engage in a win-win uh, exactly. arrangement exactly. With, 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 with them. But... Um, is there some training you are also giving Cameroonians? There, yeah, there are training too. There are training. Training is involved. Training is involved on the the method, mm. the method of um, method methods of agriculture. So mm. training is involved. So if they are interested, they get in touch with us. There's so much. Okay, the training. Okay, to ensure that uh, whatever is coming to you should meet Good. standards. Mm. Yes, mm -hmm. but uh, Apostle Ambe Valentine Gua, is this also? That time there is what was known in Africa in in, in the West as agrarian revolution. revolution. Yes, is this our time? This in is Africa? our time. Like I said earlier, if Africa doesn't see this opportunity, then we are yet to arrive the industrial. Mm -hmm. Because I have given you analysis that most of the countries in the world that emerged to become first world countries started with agriculture. Mm -hmm. China is what it is today because China went solo for some years. China was involved in rice cultivation. Funny thing is that some of these countries do not even have diversity of products. Mm -hmm. They lay emphasis on one. You are hearing a revolution in agriculture in Indonesia. It's simply palm oil. That's a seedling they collected from Nigeria some years ago. There was a man called Nana Nana what Nana Kweku who left Ghana around the 18th century and went to Fernando Po Island. He came back. People came out with all those gramophones and those earphones in those days. He came with seedlings of cocoa seedlings of cocoa mm -hmm. those seedlings of cocoa was what he used to plant in ghana, in ghana. Mm -hmm. you hear ghana today a cocoa company is a single individual's initiative when i see cameroonians go to abroad and go and carry uh old mattresses and, and, and radios and televisions and bring to africa here because flat screen it's confusion it's all confusion they should go and carry what they can bring here like what is my talk about machines bring those machines to transform these things from primary to secondary products so we can consume our own product and be sure not the things they package any kind of nonsense over there and bring. Mm. I know of tomatoes imported in this country that are fabricated in labs. They are not grown in farms. Mm -hmm. They are not organic. So the thing is that it's not just going to help us generate income or increase employment. It's going to also keep us healthy. Because our health is at stake based on the things they bring. There is something we call the genotype, um, genetic seeds that are coming out of the country. These are seeds that have been injected and programmed. They are planted in Africa. We eat and start thinking and reacting like them. They are planted in our crops. Which if we don't take serious consideration into those things, you see plantain, so you get confused with this plantain. Plantain within the space of three to four months is already ready. And then you pee the plantain, it has a color that differentiates the original plantain. You grow from your native land to see the plantain. Two different plantain. Chinese now cultivate cassava. What are the kind of seedlings? There are genetic seedlings that are brought in Africa to corrupt the originality of our organic products here. And if Africans don't fall back to get, I gave an analysis one time of millets being cultivated in Niger, which was a, 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 a local irrigation system used by the Nigerians to produce uh, um, the millets. They, they call it tasa. The World Bank came with their mechanized agriculture, tried to plant those things. They did not work. 
we have what it takes to develop what is in africa and uh, what i'm saying I, I speak this thing with so much passion because i understand very well the strength of agriculture mm. not just in Cameroon, but in africa mm. dangote has opened a 17,000 hectare in the north for tomatoes and there is a factory there to process the tomatoes from the farm direct to the factory into paste because you know he is most of the times most of what he does is, is a, a food products that's what gives um, uh, dangote money if they tell you the origin of magi you'll be amazed magi is not this crevice we are eating here magi is a chemicalized material fabricated in a lab and sent to us it came to replace the the, the, the crayfish and one other product was used in ancient africa in those days it is a swiss man that produces magi now if at all we are producing the things we need here in africa our health our health talk less of the the gain the profit uh, we need to live in health there's a high infant mortality rate and there's a high death in africa based on what we consume mm -hmm. but funny thing we have the best organic products in the world how mm -hmm. do how do you reconcile that okay good evening mr leo watching from bamenda under serious light cut of Mbo. Um, god love uh, we pray that light comes up <laughs> Uh, good evening to you, Mbo, uh, watching from uh, the Northwest uh, Regional Capital. Thanks, but please, where is it sold in Bermenda? That's where I'm based. Uh, um, whoever is writing from Bermenda, can you just call the number I'll go, I'm going to send to you uh, to find out where you can uh, meet them in Bermenda? Uh, this one says, uh, Good evening, sir. I'm Mr. Edward from Gabon. I'm very happy with the program this evening. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Edward. Uh, Okay, I want to say this is excellent initiative. Congrats to the initiators. I have a question to the initiators as well as an advice. What plans have they put in place to build local capacity and sustainability of the company? As a mechanical engineer working abroad, I have watched successful projects fail in Africa because initiators fail to build local capacity and incorporate sustainability into their planning and before long the project is abandoned. Uh, Dr. Fon, can you just uh, respond to someone who is also based out of the country, he's, uh, yes, he's, he's based in the U.S. He's talking about sustainability and uh, the building of a local capacity to be able to engineer and move this project uh, to fruition. Yeah, thank you very much for that brilliant question. Um, first of all, one of the reasons um, from research that has been observed, um, which accounts for the closing or the shutting down of uh, similar initiatives, especially the, when it comes to factories, is that you see sometimes uh, when people, some of these organizations come from abroad, they come to Africa with initiatives, they think that Africans don't know anything. You know, it's like um, they, they don't appreciate what is on the ground. The formula, there are two core things that Afro brings, that Afro brings distinguishes itself, itself from the others. We are, we're doing multi-product. We're not doing multi-product because we're excited about the diversity of Cameroon, which is also another beautiful thing. We are doing multi-product because most of the most of the factories that have used the Western formula, you know, in, in the West, uh, agriculture is highly mechanized. Any investment in food transformation in Africa that, does, that is not accompanied by a proportionate investment in the mechanization of cultivation. So if you're investing in food transformation, you must be able to invest proportionately in food cultivation because it is the cultivation that is going to sustain the transformation. But if you invest only in transformation, then it's not sustainable. On the other, on the other side too, we, we're also looking at the multi-product multi product which means that all we need is a calendar because across the year we have a variety of products that are harvested from time seasons. to time so we work with these products at each point in time so there's no period in the year that the factory is going to lay idle that we're waiting for harvest season so that those are some of the uh, organic methods that we've already laid down to see that there's sustainability. As the question also requested for, we're looking at developing local capacity. Um, we're looking at training young people to build small machines for food, uh, for food cultivation. There are some basic machines, motorized machines that can be produced for clearing, for example, for tilling, for plowing. 
these machines, we can build them back in Cameroon. We can mold them. We can cast them in Cameroon. So we're going to be looking at that as we move, as we go ahead, so that these young people that we train, we, we, we don't have to create another school. It's just a training place to give them some skill. Look, Cameroon, if it's certificate, Cameroonians have certificates. When we're employing, when we're employing um, um, staff for Afrobrain, we, we come to realize that there are lots and lots of Cameroonians with a lot of knowledge out there, but they lack the environment to apply themselves. They, some of them actually come out from the schools with a lot of theory, with a lot of theory, but when you put them into the environment, they need some time to catch up. So we also welcome young Cameroonians, especially those who have uh, carried out their educational studies in agriculture, to come and do internship with us. Come and see how things are done in the industry. Come and prepare yourself. It's possible you may be open to other opportunities. You may also get interested in working or partnering with Afrobrains, as well as you may apply yourself to other industries after understanding the business of agriculture and the and the and the and the, and the of course the, the science of, of agriculture and food transformation. So we we are not we are not just bringing an idea to to put into to force into the local population, but we are looking in a way that we partner with the local population. We try to observe what the local population is already doing, the methods that they are already using. And we are mechanizing these methods. We are automating these methods. To us, this is the way to uh, sustain the Afro-Brain vision and make sure that it benefits the young people and, of course, the women and children who are uh, virtually doing all sorts of things in order to survive back home in Cameroon. Thank you. Yeah. Um, now, you, how, what about uh, capacity building? How do you get uh, more and more uh, Cameroonians' uh, youths Belief in the possibility of becoming uh, very rich millionaires, uh, billionaires in the agri uh, in agriculture. Yeah, of course, there are lots and lots of opportunities in agriculture, from food cultivation to um, food transformation to the food distribution. Now, now we are going to be launching our online um, store, which will permit. Cameroonians to actually buy their food online and we distribute it. There are lots of, um, you see these motorbike riders who are idling around cities. We're going to be looking at the possibility to partner with them so that they can be able to deliver products to people who order from homes. We have a lot of traffic. Uh, the, the, we don't have good roads. People traveling up and down. What if we can be able to engage these uh, motorbike riders, provide them with enough security so that they can be able to work as delivery agents for um, for Afrobrains to deliver the products to people's homes. We are looking at uh, that part of the distribution. We are also looking at the marketing. We have a lot of young people who have studied some HNG in marketing, some certificates, some degrees in marketing. How can they apply themselves in agriculture? We are creating this, uh, this possibility for them to get to us and engage with us and look, in, look at how they can market. Look, we, um, my brother in the studio there raised a very important aspect of, of what we're talking about. Genetic modi uh, genetically modified foods. The health, the health implications of food is very, very key, it's central. Because food nowadays can actually be weaponized. I probably in another episode, we're going to talk a lot about some of the intrinsic motivations that I had. The quality of food in Cameroon is terrible. It is really catastrophic. Some of the products that we have in Cameroon are repackaged from the West, are food that are being rejected, repackaged and shipped to Cameroon. There's a lot of groundwork that has gone on that has motivated my intention or my, my desire to really see that we work with healthy food. Now, there are technology, there's a technology called gene shadowing, which can actually be used to shadow certain genetic, genetic ability, abilities in human beings. For example, I can provide food to Cameroonians, or people can provide food from the West to Cameroonians that can make them start having homosexual, homosexual urges. 
It's possible. It's possible to do that. So if food can be weaponized against the population, what can not be done? There are techniques out there that people can transform food into a real weapon. So for us to be able to see ourselves, it's not just a matter of food storage, but it's a matter of security. Because the health of people in a nation is a matter of national security. For us to be healthy, is giving assurance our survival. So that aspect that he raised is something from the okay. about about okay. okay. We are very conscious that this is an initiative that can very well be sustained. Thank you. Okay, Dr. Alfon. Good evening, Mr. Liu, and thanks uh, for making us discover talents and brains on a daily basis. Our main problem in this country is continuity and sponsorship. I remember one time in the documentary over one of your rival China channel, a young guy was shown transforming waste products to domestic cooking gas after some time we no longer hear about. Medino is now on paper. UNVDA is dying. The examples continue in short. Derek Walla is writing from Chang. Good evening to you. Uh, Derek, uh, good evening, Mr. Liu. Nice topic. Please help me ask the lady what the plantain flour can be used for. It's Zita writing from Yaoundé, from Bamenda, rather. Okay, if plantain flour can be used. We have uh, some, some people that are diabetic. Mm -hmm. So some of them they use it has their own uh, has their own fufu corn. Mm -hmm. So uh, like in the southwest region too, I think they say there's a particular meal that is prepared with uh, plantain with yeah plantain flour. Mm -hmm. So many people will identify them with the different flours. So mm -hmm. used for baking. Okay. Yes, yeah, used uh, like like potato flour too is used for baking. Mm -hmm. So so is it uh, you you've got it? Uh, those who are diabetic may prefer to go for the plantain flour fufu, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, this one says, I need their contact uh, number of Afro Braid, okay? I don't know whether it's your number that I should send to the public if they need it, or that of uh, the CEO? You can send uh, You can send both numbers, my number and that of okay. the CEO. Uh, okay. Mr. Liu, your program is very educative uh, to the lady of Afro Brains. How can we of Southwest specifically from Guti benefit from your programs? Uh, Bente writing from Ofri Kabi. Ofri Kabi. Okay. Uh, you, you can call them, eh? but uh, how can people, pe people who are in the Southwest, how can they benefit from what you guys are doing? From, from what we are doing, like mm. for now, we I don't know for to buy the products or to get in touch with us. Maybe to get in touch and provide you with uh, what organic. What we we'll do is that yeah, mm. we we'll, we'll give our numbers, we will give our website, but the numbers will be I think they'll be much more better, so they can get directly in contact with us and then we we'll retain them best. Okay, so uh, if you want to get in touch with uh, them to also get uh, to to get them share their experience with you. You can uh, ask for their numbers. I'll send them to you. And Pastor Elijah from Canada, Mr. Liu, uh, not uh, the USA, Elijah Enoaku. Another question for Dr. Fon is, is he open to partnership investments in this uh, project? Uh, doctor, are you open to investments? Uh, uh, Pastor Elijah is asking this question from Canada. Yeah, there is, there is no over investment in agriculture like in the third area there are lots of uh, opportunities that that uh, people can invest in okay so there is no there's there's no way we can say that the investment is is already too much so there are avenues people can get in touch with us i mean our website afrobase.com you just go to afrobase.com you have all the information that you you you, you need about afrobase you can you can contact us if you want to partner with us we will look at your interest. What form of uh, investment do you want to to have with us? We can this we can have that discussion. Look, it's not just all about the money. This is this is about this is about um, being able to bring a better life to Cameroonian. This is about looking at the situation of the the Cameroonian people. I mean, if you go to Douala, you go to Yaoundé, you look at what people do. All sorts of things to to survive. This is also creating opportunities for Cameroonians to have some smile on a daily basis. We get too much too much bad news from Cameroon, we can also get good news. So, of course, we can work together with any person who, in good faith who would want to work with us. Just get in touch with us. We are open to work. It's not just about the money, but it's more about being able to reach out to the people because we know the quality of food in Cameroon. We know 
how the food industry is in Cameroon. We know that there's a problem. Instead of sitting and grumbling, we are doing something about it. So those of us, those people who have seen that, who have also seen that there is a problem, they can join hands with us. Let us see okay. how we can make it to reach um, all the corners. As people are, are, are requesting from Gucci and all, just get in touch with us. We will look okay. at the formula with which Elijah, we Elijah, with you. Um, Dr. Fon, Dr. Dr. Fon, I, with you. Dr. Fon, I've sent your number to Elijah. He will certainly uh, contact you to see if there's a possibility for you guys to work together. This one says, uh, good evening, Mr. Liu and the crew. Where is Afro Brain Cameroon located in the country, and what does it take to be trained there? Manuel writing from Boya. Can I have the contact uh, number? I'm sure you have uh, the number there with you. This one says, uh, good evening, sir. I'm called Marvelous. I love your program. Please, I wish to get in touch with the Afro, Afro Agricultural uh, Program. Okay. Um, yes many young persons if you are interested in joining them you will just uh, get their numbers but uh apostle and be valentine uh, agriculture has not been attractive to young cameroonians for a very long time how do we get them more motivated uh to be involved in this is it by providing them with these opportunities and telling them that hey many of those guys you admire out there are making it big from the farms uh, I think uh, most of uh, countries that have actually encouraged agriculture, it begins with the government policies. Okay. A lot of young people have written projects on agriculture and they are dumped at the Minister of Agriculture. While I do not totally condemn the Minister of Agriculture in Cameroon because it's one of the ministers that has permitted the import of machines in Cameroon. The, the policy guiding um, importation of agricultural machines in Cameroon is very flexible as compared to any other ministry. So I think in that domain, the Ministry of Agriculture has done so well. Now, if these machines are imported in the country to carry out agricultural production, there are people who need some subventions to carry out agricultural visions. People have written so many projects. The issue is project I know of individuals that have written project agriculture, taking it to the Ministry of Agriculture because such a ministry is supposed to be giving grants and salvation to young farmers who are coming up to encourage them plow the farm and then uh, exploit the fields but unfortunately most of those projects reach at the ministry of agriculture and they die there i think government policy has to encourage because in the countries that we know that have developed very well the government actually aided most of the farmers that rose up to higher echelons in life so we think the government policy in cameroon has to place more value on those who are coming up in the area of agriculture for instance, I have a farm in Bamayo with almost about 3,000 bunches of plantains. That is a personal initiative, and every kobo in the farm is invested by me. Now, such a thing that has been done, an individual who has been able to take his personal resources and initiative to go to that level, it is just a sign that this person has the will and the good desire to go along. The government was supposed to come as an aid from behind and say, okay, since you have gone two hectares, let us make it 10 hectares. It's going to be a benefit to the entire nation because we are feeding the country, one, we are providing employment, number two, we are also securing the health of the individuals of the country, thereby blocking the importation. Thirdly, um, doctor said, Sustainability has to do with the production of the crops and also the procession of the crops. One of the things I think we also have to engage the government is also to give support to home-based products. The consumption of home-based products is one challenge because you will not be surprised that we can process all these things and take to the market and then Chinese come with theirs, which is even cheaper. We go to the market, we are unable to sell what we produce. It is very dangerous because I've discovered that most of the countries that have advanced are people who have not permitted the importation of certain certain basic foods. Mm -hmm. And if I thought we have companies now in Cameroon like Afro Brain that is able to process plantain to flour, process cassava, process tomatoes, then I'm sure we're supposed to put restrictions or cause some of these goods that enter into the country contraband goods. This will be contraband goods and the encourage the promotion and the consumption of our own locally made products i'm yet to find out the food um uh, how do i put it the food licensing company in cameroon because any junk enter this country in nigeria we have have NAVDAC. things don't enter in nigeria they have to go through a kind of survey they are being tested in lots for consumption but everything just come into the country and we start consuming it from the poor which i think things that are being consumed 
you hear what the doctor said i said it here i said genetically uh, 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 programmed seats mm -hmm. to make us reason think like them you see homosexuality lesbianism is entering the cameroon it's not going to be a sermon that will be preached it's going to be based on what we consume we have to be very very careful on, with things like that i'm sure if we have a body in cameroon that controls the kind of food that is coming to this country is going to help us detect the kind of bad things that enter the country when such things are discovered the individual or the nation or the company alone should be blacklisted and such products will be banned in the country because i'm telling you i grew in this country there are some plantains i eat now i cannot understand if the plantain we used to grow when we used to eat when we were younger people growing up the plantain has another dimension of operation this this uh uh uh, uh this achukoko the coward is it collocation or what Mm -hmm. uh, Ibu Kuku. Ibu Kuku. Mm -hmm. It suddenly disappeared into thin air one mm -hmm. because a kind of uh, what I was a, a kind of virus or what mm -hmm. affected it, the thing went out, out. completely. That's a, a food crop in Cameroon that helps so many people. Mm -hmm. So when I when I'm when we are talking about the, the health condition of Cameroonians, I think that there should be a body that is responsible for the verification of what we consume in this country. We have heard of certain biscuits that have entered the country and certain milk. People drink it. It's something else. Mm -hmm. People go into labs and fabricate all kind of nonsense and then send to the market. People consume and they die. We don't know how many persons die because of bad food consumed in this country. And there are some other kinds of food that enter the country. They kill you slowly. Mm -hmm. As you are eating them, you are going down gradually. So I think all those things should be put into place. The government should see that they establish policies that help us consume what we produce, mm -hmm. as well as ginger or energize or empower or subvent mm -hmm. young people who are into the field of agriculture. It will boost up that sector. It will boost up uh, that uh, sector. Good evening, uh, Mr. Liu. Please uh, send me the contacts of Afro so what it takes uh, to join them. Okay. Um, Julius from Boya says, good evening to you all in the studio. Kudos to Dr. Ngum and team. A wonderful initiative. Go ahead. Afro brains. Uh, Juliet is writing from uh, Boya. Good evening, everyone. My name is Ndam Gufo from Yaoundé. I'm interested in agriculture and would like to be trained in food transformation. Is it possible to get the contact of Afro Brain Cameroon? Uh, thank you. Okay. Um, good evening. Mr. Liu, tell Madam to give the contact number. Uh, number Chi Golov is writing from Nchi Nji Chame. Okay, I don't know where that is. Uh, good evening, Mr. Liu, and all the crew in the studio. I love your program. May God continue to empower you. Uh, gladness watching from Banyu. Uh, good evening, Mr. Liu. I'm Valentine Sanda Iba from the University of Bermuda area. Please, I would love to have the phone numbers and email contacts of Afro Prince Agriculture is our golden inheritance. Please, uh, can you guys ask for these numbers uh, via WhatsApp uh, for me? Good evening, Mr. Liu and the man of God in the studio. No man of God is here with us. <laughs> yes, uh, Mr. Liu, Apostle Ambejo said it all. We should learn uh, from the past when a new government takes over. They should keep the good habits of the old government. We had the Operation Green Revolution. This government should invest more on the Ministry of Agriculture, not on defense and others. Look at all the infrastructure of Iraq. The cooperative buildings in Bermuda, they are all gone. I'm Leslie Niba, writing from uh, Bermuda. Greetings, uh, Mr. Liu. How can someone from Kumbu get in contact with Afro Brins? Ngwa Nicolas is writing from there. Okay, from Kumbu. Now, uh, Madam Gum, yes, um, you guys are into this. How easy, how difficult is it to come up with, uh, we say, corn flour, um, cassava flour, plantain flour. plantain flour, and all the like? Please, can you, can you repeat? How please? easy or difficult is it to come up with, and what or how better is it to use this than the flours that we have in the market? Okay. Mm -hmm. The, the good thing about it is that the first part has, uh, has uh, Apostle said. As, as Apostle said, that mm. the first part is that we need healthy food, we need organic food. Mm. So what we do is like, we don't just take any type of, uh, we, really, we do a follow-up, a follow-up of what we get. Mm -hmm. if, it is a, if it is a cassava, if it is a potato, we, we do a follow-up so we are sure of the kind of, uh, kind of cassava we have, we are sure of the kind of, kind of, um, plantain we have so 
the advantage in, from the other product is that it's healthy, it's organic. So that's what I can say. Okay, the advantage, the advantage from the flour you get from... It is uh, different from the others, is that mm. it's healthy. But is that what you're encouraging Cameroonians to consume? Highly, highly recommended. Mm -hmm. Highly recommended, so, um, for health reasons. For health reasons, so mm -hmm. you may be consuming whatever you're consuming out there, but um, it is also important from what we are getting from the studios that if it is possible to verify, it will be preferable that you go for... Mm -hmm. what is organic what is organic because yes. we have so many people especially diabetic uh, patients that take that consume a lot of product from us mm. um apostle Abe valentine Ngua, how do we understand uh, that cameroon for decades is uh importing so much fish yet uh, those who are importing this fish are not growing are not creating fish farms across the nation mm -hmm. we import so much rice we can count those companies that are involved in this in this rice business and we can estimate how much to make out of it but 30 20 10 years after they are not opening up uh, rice, rice farms, farms and lots and lots of things are being important uh, mr leo you must understand that uh, we we when we speak sometimes they say we are blaming the government it's not just blaming the government. There are individuals who do not even need government subvention. Mm -hmm. But the policies that operate will not even allow you to breathe. Mm -hmm. The best rice, according to nutritive value, mm -hmm. is the rice from the, mm -hmm. all over the world. All what comes from China, mm -hmm. Malaysia, Singapore, see, is nonsense. I can guarantee you it's total nonsense. They are having plastic rice sold in this country because they are paying tax. How, what does it cost for us to expand the rice farms around the Indo plain? We have natural soil that rice grows there easily. If you eat the rice and you eat another rice, you will see the difference between rice. That is a treasure given to us. That is an opportunity given to us, but we are not exploiting it. And if at all people want to come and invest in this country, the procedures you go through to establish something that will increase employment, give the increased standard of living, and even pay taxes to the government. The procedures and the parameters that they will put in front of you, you get discouraged. A man called me from Finland two days ago and said a friend came here to establish a very huge company. The kind of conditions that were put in front of him suffocated and the vision died. I'm asking if the government of our country is interested in the well-being of its citizens, we complain that Cameroonians are lazy. They are not lazy. If you go out of this country, you see how Cameroonians are fighting. This man is talking from Shanghai. He's talking from China. He fabricates machines. There is a young guy that came to me. He's a biochemist. He's a, he has a PhD in industrial chemistry. The guy does from chocolate to ties to deodorants to perfumes to everything, soap, savon, everything. He said to me, Laborex is the company in Cameroon that is used, it's a French company that supplies all these bathing soaps, oil and red. It's a French company. That company has more grounds in this country than the Cameroonians who have gone and studied outside and come here. That is because we have a very poor government policy managing the talents and the skills of the people. Yeah, but the problem is government policy... Uh Take for example someone who has been importing fish for for 30 years in Cameroon. That person should be a multi-billionaire because he supplies to, to the whole nation. Why not just say that? Okay, we are giving you 10 years, make the billions. But after six, seven years, we want to see you open 100 fish farms in Cameroon so that Cameroonians can feed from the fish that is produced in Cameroon. Same for chicken. There are people who are specialized in uh, chicken importing production. chicken mm -hmm. in, in, the, in the country. There are persons who are importing the pork, you are pork, saying. Yes. Mm -hmm. How do you import pork for 10 years and you make billions out of it, like the, 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 the amounts you are... You are 42 getting. billion yeah. worth and then of pork. We don't, have more, we don't have thousands of pork farms in, in Cameroon. Mm -hmm. Shouldn't that be a government policy? It should be a government policy. You see, when Jay Rollins came to power in Ghana, eh, mm. he did what called price control. If this phone by state standard was 2,000 Ghana cities and you sell it for 2,500, there is a control, price control unit. 
that comes to your shop and close it and lock you up. But you see, government will give policy that the phone in this capacity should be sold for 10,000. Shops are selling them for 20,000. It is government policy. And nobody controls. Nobody controls. Mm. What the price control unit do is that they go around collecting taxes from small kiosks and other places. What they were supposed to do was to make sure that people who are exaggerating or exorbitantly increasing the prices of products in the market beyond government tariffs should be brought to book. Now, if at all somebody is importing fish in the country, do you know that the same China that we say we are importing fish from, they do all their fishing in the coasts of Cameroon? They are even come with nets that catches fish that our own fishermen could not catch in those days. How do you explain that? That we have fish, we have sufficient between Cameroon and China and other countries who import fish. Which of those countries have more rivers than us here? We have the fishes, yet we are importing fish. A question mark. What we push Cameroon to import onion or pork meat? I don't see any reason. That is, if at all we properly manage the investment of these things in Cameroon, we will not need to import. We're supposed to be supplying. As a matter of fact, Cameroon is a bread basket of Central Africa. Mm -hmm. If you have not traveled to Chad, you have not gone to Central Africa Republic, you have not gone to Gabon, you have not gone to Congo, you have not gone to Guinea, Equatorial Guinea, you will not understand that Cameroon is a bread basket. Do you know that we supply beans to Congo? Congo Brazzaville. They don't have food. Don't have food. Now imagine Cameroon sustaining these particular regions, this, this semat zone, mm -hmm. in terms of food production. Then we are still importing. Something is wrong. Something is wrong. We are feeding at least five countries in this particular sub-region. Then we are still importing food. Something is wrong. I am very convinced, like I said, we have 10 regions. And all, you know, first I said they used to say we could not grow palm de France in Cameroon, I mean uh, the apple. Mm -hmm. But statistics, time has shown that we can produce it. Okay, we can produce There's it. There's a guy doing it in Kumbo. Okay, good evening, Mr. Liu. And the panelist, uh, Fokem Zuma uh, Valles, writing from Melon Center. Just want to thank uh, my mentor and model, Apostle Ambe, for his wise and transparent teaching on the topic of today. We need just uh, five Cameroonians like him, and we will go far in Cameroon. Thanks, uh, Master. Okay, Apostle Ambe has gotten you. Daisy, writing from Kumba, says, Good evening, Mr. Liu, and to all the panelists. I'm missing a lot. I can imagine how hot the studio is. Still no electricity in Kumba. <laughs> Daisy, good evening to you. Uh, this one says, uh, Good evening, Mr. Liu, and to all the panelists. Uh, um, okay, uh, good evening to you. Uh, Good evening, Mr. Liu. Apostle Lambe is talking about Ndop rice. I'm selling it in the market with other imported rice, but people come and buy, but the imported one. Please let us advise people to consume what is our own. Michaelson is writing from uh, Yaoundé. Uh, this one says, Good evening, Mr. Liu and panelists. I'm enjoying the program Thoughts, uh, with the frequent power failure. Please, for the contact of Afro Brains, Fonte and Estine Tiembom writing from Abamenda. Okay, uh, good evening. Mr. Liu, please for the number. Christopher is writing from uh, Douala. Uh, good evening, Mr. Liu and Mr. George from Lima, please for the number. Okay. Oops, Mr. George, um, good evening. Mr. Liu and the panelists are planning to invest in uh, corn cultivation with about 10 hectares. Please wish to have Afro Brain contact Aku Success writing from Abu Dhabi. Okay, uh, good evening to you. This one says, uh, Please, for Afro Brain's number, I am into agriculture and I would like to get in contact with Afro Brain's. Okay, uh, many persons are interested. Good evening, uh, sir. I'm enjoying the program. I wish to have the phone number and email of Afro Brain's. Okay, oops. Um, Mr. No, I'm not, not, not Mr. Dr. Fon, um, are we in Africa trying to skip the lanes or skip steps? Uh, uh, should we focus more on? Uh, should we focus more on uh, exploiting to the fullest the agricultural sector before uh, trying to ramp up to wanting to produce cars and electronics and and the like when? what we have been given the goal that we have is being neglected should the transformation not uh, be centered first at the level of agriculture 
Um, um, Braulio, that question is an excellent question. An excellent question because it touches something which is really a core value to me. Um, let me just indicate that um, by the time I finished my PhD, I had a lot of emails dropping into my inbox that requested me, that was wanting me to go and probably do further research. Well, of course, like I said, I studied um, engineering physics to do further re research um, in a lot of sophisticated and complex stuff. But one thing was clear to me, that my people just need food to eat and water to drink. You see, um, sometimes I believe that the brains that come from Africa are collected and kept in a place where they are working to the benefit of the West. Meanwhile, our problems, we can, we already, the brain from Africa already have the solution to the African problem. But it's just that we do not apply ourselves to our society. The conditions that we have in our societies in Africa have not been in a way, have not been in a way that would encourage um, those brains to apply themselves. It's, it's a huge sacrifice for me to say I'm going to um, ignore some of those opportunities that could have helped me as a person in order to focus on doing something that is going to help the Cameroonian people as a whole. Um, for African brains to be applicable to the continent, and Cameroon in particular, it will require policy, as my, as, as my brother was, was indicating, my brother in the studio was indicating. It will require policy. I must tell you that um, they, they, if you look at the Cameroon law on investment in Cameroon, Cameroon is the best country in the world on paper. But if you go to the offices, there's so many challenges you would face. So it takes beyond just academic knowledge. It takes beyond passion. It takes a lot of patience in order to be able to push on in, in, in Cameroon and Africa as a whole. You see, the minds of Africans through the media have been placed at the point which is inconsistent with their immediate environment. You would find somebody in a very undeveloped or underdeveloped environment buying a car which has nothing to do with how his environment looks like. You will find somebody who can get up from, a, 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 from, from bed and put on shoes that have nothing to do with, with what he or she is going to do for the day. What that means is that the mind of the people has been confused by the media. The people's mind is far up there. Meanwhile, their environment is still far behind. In order for Africa, and Cameroon in particular, to develop, the people must be able to synchronize their mind with their environment. Cameroonians should begin to think according to the environment they find themselves. If our minds are we are thinking, uh, we are thinking jet planes. We are thinking jet planes when we don't even have healthy food to eat. Then there's a problem. Mm -hmm. If we are, we, we are, we are sitting in the bar and we are arguing about uh, uh, um, limousines when we don't even have a, a wheelbarrow to carry food from the farm into the market. Then there's something wrong with our thinking. The most important, the challenge of Africa and Cameroon in particular is the thinking of the people. The people have abandoned their environment and they are comparing what they see on Hollywood movies. They fail to understand that most of those things they see on Hollywood on TV are designed to stimulate certain behaviors, especially in Africa. How do you, how do you maintain the, 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 the dollar? How do you maintain the value of the dollar? You use propaganda. How do you maintain, you see this issue of Bitcoin that has come. It's all propaganda current the currency that is based on propaganda, just the thing they use the media in order to give value to things that have no value. You can have all the millions in the world. When you are hungry, you come and meet me in my farm. And I'll tell you the value of your money, the real value of your money. So to answer your question directly, the point is that our brains, our minds 
our intellect is not applying itself to its original environment. We are thinking further. We are thinking, we are thinking far away, not further, because further would mean you are thinking along. But we are thinking far away from where, what we are supposed to be thinking. We are supposed to be engineering solutions from our environment. You see the Chinese, the Chinese have a machine for almost everything. <laughs> and that is because they think from their environment. They, they create solutions in the environment. Their, their life has been automated to be according to their environment. Cameroonians, Africans can begin to do that. We have to begin to, we have to begin to transform our environment into a classroom where learning is not limited to the four walls. But we have to, and this notion of certificates, it's really getting, sometimes it gets me really crazy. Sometimes you get people with all sorts of certificates, but put them in the field, do something with your hands. What can you do? We are moving into the age where it will no longer be what certificate do you have, but what can you do? What can you do with your hands? Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, doctor, good evening, Mr. Liu. What happened with... Uh, which is Mr. Liu, what happened with the tractors in a bulova that was made for agriculture is neighbor writing from uh, Limbe. I don't, uh, I'm not the Minister of Agriculture. Bonsoir, Monsieur Liu. Merci d'avoir pensé à nous, les jeunes. S'il vous plaît, uh, je peux avoir le contact de Afrobrain car je suis intéressé par l'agriculture et l'élevage. Uh, moi, c'est Kidem Shekina depuis Bafoussam. Okay, uh, bonsoir à vous, uh, Gidem uh, Shekina. Good evening, Mr. Liu. Interesting. Mr. Liu, uh, this Justice Longman from EDEA will wish to know if Afrobrains has an institution to train as aspirants. If yes, where is it located? Please, uh, for the contact number, good program there. Is there uh, an institution that trains uh, people who want to work with you guys? Yes, oh, you are still working towards that. We are still working towards that. As I said, we already have a side, a side where we are going to. We are building a complex. Mm -hmm. They have a training center. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, they, they definitely there will be. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, good evening, Mr. Liu, and to all uh, the studio. I love your program. I have undergone training in agriculture at a professional school called AFOP uh, CDD from 2011 to 2016, and a project was written by me and sponsored my NGO but uh, crisis in the English regions failed the project and I can't I cannot continue please hope uh, please for hope Charles Mbambu I don't know what I want to ask for help I can't help I'm a journalist now just get to the guys whether they can help him Cuddles to you all in the studio I like the topic today and would like to come in contact with Afro Brains Dennis is writing from Abameda good evening to you uh, Dennis, hi, Mr. Liu. This is Adi Derek writing from Limbe. I wish to find out at the lowest level of education that can accept before they train a person because I like what I'm hearing so much. Okay, um, no, just get to them. I'm sure they will tell you what it will take. Do you know Dennis is Do you know Dennis is Yeah. No, Okay. Um, good evening, Mr. Liu. I'm from God. Uh, bless uh, Apostle Ambe, please, for his number. I'm into pig farming. I'm in Bermuda. I don't know whether Apostle Ambe is, is into pig farming too. Good evening, Mr. Liu, and to everyone in the studio. I'm in poetry farming. Please, I would like to have the number of Afro brains. Collins watching from uh, Dubai. Good evening to you, uh, Collins. Good evening, Mr. Liu, and panelists. What Apostle Ambe is saying concerning the advantage of domestically produced goods over imports is true. But Mr. Liu, do you know that imports are cheaper in this country more than more produced goods? Uh, you can name as many examples as possible. Eno Mulubad writing from Bermenda. Yes, we. that is why we need to mass produce home goods. Good evening, Mr. Liu. Please kindly give me the number of the brother who deals with agricultural machines from China. I'm Julius, writing from Bafus. I'm glad to hear of Afro brains in uh, Cameroon. Uh, good evening to the entire panel. I am Sone from Douala. The main problem faced by entrepreneurs in agricultural sector in Cameroon is lack of an enabling environment. How can this young entrepreneur flourish with high competition pressure in managing from imports? A country that wants to develop must think how to become independent. If nothing is done, there will come a time 
that uh, the country will live at the mercy of other nations. The government should provide more enabling environment for most of our small entrepreneurs. Good evening to you. Uh, good evening, Mr. Leo. Agriculture is our backbone of our economy, but we lack the education, good governance, and lack of roads, network, and electricity. It is wisdom writing from Yaoundé. Good evening, Mr. Leo. Agriculture in Cameroon, especially small scale farmers, have been abandoned to themselves. There is no incentive, very low prices, lack of farm to market routes. I have abandoned my coffee farm because of some of these uh, problems. Um, Ban Kwene is writing from Abamenda. Uh, good evening, Mr. Liu. My own is how come does Mr. Ambe know everything? Mr. Ambe has uh, knowledge concerning all walks of life. Chai Collins, private da, writing from. <laughs> <laughs> Bonaberry is not Mr. It's Apostle. I need the contact of Afro Brains in Bermuda. Okay, uh, please, you just get to them. Um, now, the Apostle and B. Now, well, from every indication, when you look at the volume of uh, imported either rice, fish, and uh, it tells that if one were to invest in agriculture, there is a ready market because some people are skeptical. Mm -hmm. But if you were to sit back home and look at the quantity of goods entering Cameroon and are sold, it tells that this agriculture is, is just it's just the, the it's a gold mine. Yes, Afri agriculture is the gold mine mm -hmm. of Cameroon. I can repeat it over and over, and I will sing it till I draw my last breath until this government and our people turn. And face the agricultural sector we were not we're not going to see the economic boom we are dreaming of create planes tomorrow create cars tomorrow if people are not fed very well they will never have the brains to produce those things we need first a strong agrarian revolution in this country shocking enough Cameroon is not just the market for what it produces Every country surrounding Cameroon in the Sema region practically depends on Cameroon for supply. That is out of the context. If we go to East and West Africa, Mali, there's no food. Burkina Faso, no food. Liberia, no food. Sierra Leone, no food. Talk less of Niger, those are countries that you know. Nigeria itself doesn't have food. It's not back in Africa to Nigeria. They have three things fufu, gari, semovita, and they change different kinds of soup with rice. They are changing their soup, not food products. Spices themselves they do not have. So if Cameroon can be feeding Chad, Central African Republic, Guinea Equatorial, Gabon, and Congo Brazzaville, then feeding Cameroonians themselves. It shows that if at all we invest properly in agriculture, we are going to have market already in this region of Semak. People have gone to Rwanda. Rwanda, they, they don't have food. I mean food. They don't have food. East Africa doesn't have food. So if you look at it, the worst is the north. North Africa, you go there, there's, there's practically no food there. So this Cameroon alone, <laughs> oh God, Nigeria can boast of oil. That is their strength. Cameroon has oil, but it is not its backbone. We have both the intellect. We have the age group, because 70% of the population are youths. We have equally the markets, which we have. I mean, what is it that we lack? Let us go back before we ever found oil in this country. What used to sustain this economy? Look at the Northwest that people claim there is no oil there. What sustains the Northwest? Are there some minerals in the Northwest? But what we are talking about beans, corn, cabbage, carrot, potatoes, name it. You have to look up to the Northwest. You see trucks of different kinds are transporting beans and corn and potatoes and cabbage and carrots every single week from the Northwest region. And cattle. Cattle from the Northwest region. You go to the North, where it is the, the, the desert area. It's crops like this, roots, crops like onion, garlic. They grow in those places. In an, as a matter of fact, we have no disadvantaged climate here. 
you come to the forest region in the south you cannot talk anything you put there grows then talks of southwest with the alluvial farm from Cameroon. you 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 cough cocoa seed it produces a cocoa tree you spit coffee seed it i mean you are not planting you are spitting it you suck mango and just throw it carelessly you are having a mango tree but we carry pepper from one place to another in the air it drops and start producing <laughs> what, what are you looking for anymore <laughs> the climatic condition we have europe around boya we have the desert around the north we have the tropical equatorial climate within the littoral and the central region central region has four four climates it has two rainy seasons two dry seasons so what climatic condition are you looking for the pomme de founder said they say it grows only in france it's cultivated now in Bansa. Because the climatic condition there gives opportunity for the thing we're importing. There is a young man here who is in Cameroon. He's already producing from the France. So tell me any crop in Africa or in Europe that is not grown here. How? From the west region right to the Norway is grass feed. We can feed as many cattle as possible. Goats, rams, sheep, cow. We have the climatic condition and the, 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 the grazing land to grow these things. So I don't know what we are, we are missing in Cameroon. We are supposed to be very strong in dairy foods and well as agricultural food in this country. Okay. Food crops. Cash crops, talk less of timber before you go to coffee, to cocoa, to banana, to rubber. The, 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 I mean, everything grows here. Okay. Uh, good evening, sir. I'm Joel Akonda from... Uh Mamenda are produce incubator machines uh, for of different capacities and need sponsors or farmers who want to hash X on their own. Please help me. Uh, I don't know how I can help you. Um, hello, Mr. Kum. Very interesting topic. Please, can I uh, get a postal and base contact number? Onkunji is writing from Bamenda. Uh, good evening, sir. I'm oh, Paul Young and Nasmi. From Bermuda, please, I'm sorry for disturbing you this evening. I just on my TV now, so I saw the topic Afro Brains Cameroon, and I'm so interested in watching it. So please, I just uh, wish to ask what, um, okay. Uh, please, uh, Leo, kudos to your programs. Let the next topic on marital issues be normal for couples to have separate accounts. <laughs> that's, the, that's why we discussed yesterday now. Good evening to you all in the studio, Mr. Leo. This program is very educative. How can I have the number, the number, Bati Eric from my 27 and up? Good evening to you all. I love your program. May God give you all strength and long life. Uh, Cindy writing from Bermuda. Okay. Now, as we speak, Afro Brains is in uh, only Yaoundé? Or? Yeah. But uh, with time, right? yeah, spread. you will spread. You will spread, and uh, you produce. Just uh, you, what do you produce there? How do you market them? How do you get uh, the organic uh, uh, material to to transform? Okay, how do we get the organic material to transform? Mm -hmm. The raw products. Okay, the organic material to transform the, mm. the products. Uh, like for example, let me just start. For example, like with the feed, mm -hmm. like. Uh, like the feed, uh, we do. We have granite oil, so most of the, there are so many extras that are combined and then already there. We have organic feed for the for the chicken, for example, and then the others. So most of them is is gotten uh, through the processing, the leftover from the from the processing. Leftover from the processing. You, you yeah, for example, problems. like uh, we have we have what we do is like for now. With time, we, we, we intend to, 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 to have farms too. But what we do now, we just uh, mostly, mostly, um, we mostly go to local farmers and and support them. You support them and you collect what they produce? Yeah, we support them and collect what they produce. Okay. Um, let me move over to Dr. Uh, Fon. Dr. Fon. Uh, <coughs> now, Afro, Afro Brains is involved in... Uh, uh, the production of uh, plantain flour, um, tomato paste. Uh, I don't know. What is the next step for Afro Brains? Are you envisaging involving? Yeah. yeah. Uh, thank you very much, sir. 
Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Brandio. Um, currently, Alpha Brains uh, transforms quite a wide variety of uh, uh, organic uh, products. Um, our, how do we, we function? Um, whatever organic raw material we come across, we can transform it. The most important thing is that we should have it in large quantities and we should have the assurance that we can have it continuously. So uh, that is that is the reason why I'm so thankful to uh, your, your, your station for giving us this opportunity to actually communicate these opportunities to, uh, to Cameroonians who, who see the importance of, of agriculture in, 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 uh, on the planet. So you see, we, we produce, we transform tuba, uh, whether it's cassava, whether it's um, uh, coco yams, we have, we have achu flour, we have waterfufu flour, organic, this is organic healthy food. And it is not that because it is organic, the price will be much higher than what we have in the market. No, it's the same price. It's the same price with a better quality. The idea is that it is coming from our farm. So people have this tendency to believe that because um, it is organic, we're going to say, oh, it's more expensive. It, you can, it, it is more expensive in Europe. It's more expensive in the West. We are in Africa. It is our food. What we're doing, we're, we're using our local methods to transform our food. What I've done, the machines I built, it, it is, those are machines that are built with our local methods in mind. It is not today that food transformation is starting in Africa or in Cameroon. People have been using traditional methods to transform food, to increase shelf life, to, store, to be able to store them. What Afrobrains has done is, Afrobrains has automated these traditional methods. Our traditional methods of preserving food in Africa and Cameroon in particular is very healthy. It's not the chemical methods as used in the West. Our methods are healthy. What we've done is we, we're not doing it with machines so that we can do as much as possible. Alpha brain can transform any um, any uh, food um, which is available, which is organic. And uh, we are looking at beginning to train young people on how to build some of these small machines. I'm, I'm happy that somebody who uh, talked about building incubators in, 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 in Bamenda, which is very good. Those are the skills that we would like to train young people um, because you make you make yourself when we begin to produce capital goods, then we begin to propagate. We begin to propagate those. Um, uh, um, we begin to reduce post harvest loss, and we begin to fight food insecurity. Cameroon is described by the the the, 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 um, the, the UN as being insecure when it comes to classification in food uh, in food security. But it is shocking because Cameroon has a wide variety of food and there's post-harvest, there's a lot of post-harvest law. So a problem, the missing link is in being able to transform the food and begin to, to, to look at what is possible in agriculture. When they have that in mind, what is possible? They will begin to apply themselves. They can begin to contact us to look at those who are into marketing. How can they market these products? You, you, you would find you would find a lot of our young people marketing genetically modified food that have uh, been imported from abroad. Now, Apple Brains is coming with food that has been transformed from our local organic products. Come and work with us. With all confidence, give these goods to family. Sell these goods to, 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 to. Make these people know. Because the thing is, people are having perceptions they are still watching Hollywood and they are not really they are not really um, certain about when we talk about transforming food back home it's still a mystery to Cameroonians so we want Cameroonians to know that it's something extraordinary this is just a normal thing this is the same food that they plant in the farm we have just been able to transform it to a form that can stay locked at home for example waterproof flour you buy our waterproof flour you can buy the quantity that you like you can buy the whole thing for the whole year. You take a little bit, you soak it in water, and you spin it, and you eat. If you want to prepare um, water for food, the following thing, do it. But you see that normally, if you go to the market, buy water, you buy it fresh, and that form is not very healthy, because it's still fermenting. And, and you have to bring it the form that is healthier, it's dry. You can 
keep it at home for as long as you desire. So these are some of the solutions that we are putting into the system. We mentioned the plantain flour. Plantain flour is very healthy as, as a, a mirror indicator for diabetic patients and white of colors. You can cook bread, you can fry your pancake, you can do your biscuit, you can do your cake. All the flour, which cassava you can do your bread, you can do your pancake, you can do your water food, and so on. Uh, sweet potato flour, all variety of flour. We have a um, 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 cow pea, which is popularly called uh, cocky beans. You, you can still have that too. So we have a wide variety. You go to the oil section. We produce oil from every grain. We are looking at people who can supply us with Ekusi so that we can produce healthy oil from Ekusi loaded with vitamin A, 4% of, of Ekusi or vitamin A, which is very important in cooking oil. Some of the oils that are brought from abroad are extracted chemicals. A lot of chemicals need. People don't know that those oils are not being added. Some of those oils are extracted. We use cold pressed method to extract our oil. Cold pressed means that we'll, in the extraction of the oil, you don't use chemical. You don't use heat. Because when you use too much heat, it's going to destroy the bitter. It's going to destroy a lot of the important nutrients that is found in the oil. We use cold pressed. So the oil is very healthy. But I think we need to complicate our So we are talking, we're talking like this so that young people who have some academic background can begin to come and they we, we give them all this so they can communicate this to the general public. So people can begin to know that we are not just talking about organic food. This is not the organic food they hear here on, on, on Hollywood. This is local food, which is healthy. Okay. So people should understand it's not like something expensive. It's just normal. It's our food. And it's healthy for our body. Uh, Mr. Leo, good evening. I like your program. When you import some of these uh, meshing, sometimes uh, the Cameroon government would never release uh, them from the poor. It's Nestor Wanta writing from Bamenda. Um, <clears throat> thanks a lot for this particular program on food and agrarian transformation. Please kindly send me the number of that woman or institution representative on the platform. Okay. Um, stop calling. When you call, we cannot read messages. So, uh, good evening. In the studio, interesting program. Keep up, uh, Mr. Liu and the crew. I love your program. Please, can I find Afro Brain Cameroon in Douala Stock Exchange Market? It's very new. Ace writing from uh, Yaoundé. Can you just ask that number directly to those concerned? Good evening, Mr. Liu. I like the way Apostle Ambe do all his analysis with statistics just to confirm that he he said about mr dangote last week i was in bermenda food market with a tomato dealer who was lamenting that dangote has dealt with them by urging the nigerian government to stop importation of fresh tomatoes contraband via manfi from cameroon that he will employ nigerian youths to farm tomatoes in nigeria ben lucas watching from Menka village santa subdivision we produce leeks, celery, carrots, and tunes. Please, can your audience help tell us other end products other than consuming them raw? Okay, you're talking about my panelists. Okay, good evening, Mr. Liu. Contact number and email of Afro Brains. Okay, um, this one says that. Mr. Liu, excellent program you have. Our agricultural delegates should work hard in Glove with Afro Brains. Most uh, delegates don't even have a garden at their yard. I truly wonder what knowledge they do give to the public. Are is writing from Yaoundé. Good evening to you. Are good evening, Mr. Liu. I always love following your program because it's well educated. The government of Cameroon don't love the citizens because we have something like Ndop Rice and for the government to support the farmer in the area uh, to produce more and more. But they are not doing it. Why? The government likes spending money for an unnecessary use. Where are we driving to? From Galabe, Yannick Galabe, writing from Limbe. Good evening to you. Good evening, Mr. Liu. As a young farmer in Bonso, all I need is someone who could help me to realize uh, the above mini tractor for my rice and maize cultivation. Bro Nathaniel Ororo One writing from Kumbu. Okay, good evening to you. Uh, good evening. 
Mr. Liu, kudos to your panelists. Uh, we need a change of mindset in our eating habits. Special greetings to versatile Apostle Ambe. Good evening, Mr. Liu. Okay. Cameroonians need a change in mindset in their eating habits. Aku Ferdinand is also writing uh, from Boya. Uh, this one says, uh, I'm giving free organic gardening services to the entire city of Bamenda. I will be happy if you can host me to give you a great insight in this area and how we can use it to save our population from okay good evening uh dear panelists uh, courage to you guys hello mr liu and the prime R team you can help the gentile man who fabricate incubators by passing his number i personally need one for farm thanks again for the great job you are doing denko is writing from abomenda um yes uh, Apostle and be Valentine Ngwa. Agriculture determines what a country fits on and on which um, it also determines how healthy a nation is. If the what you feed on is not healthy, a you have a sick. a sick population. Of course. That's why I said that what we eat matters a lot. Mm -hmm. Thank God somebody is uh, corresponding with what I said concerning Ali Elijah Liko Dangote. Mm -hmm. You see, uh, one of the senators in Nigeria went to the Senate and said we have so much focused on oil to the extent that it's difficult for us to discover better potentials in us. The Nigeria has a huge tourism industry that has not been exploited because oil has blinded us. Nigeria has a huge agricultural sector because oil equally has blinded us. There are countries in Africa that God has blessed abundantly. And blindness to these abilities and potentials is the reason for poverty. That's why I will always repeat this my quote. Poverty is not the absence of human, financial, or material resources. It's the absence of leadership. If Nigeria that does not have a climatic condition and a soil content that compares to Cameroon, can be producing 17,000 hectares of tomatoes. That's Dangote who is in different sectors in business. is developing a 17,000 hectare of tomatoes. Here in Wotutu, Limbe here, if you go there, mm -hmm. right. <laughs> the amount of tomatoes that come from Wotutu down to Bojongo, every year, it will amaze you. I asked once, I have never seen oranges being taken to brasseries. What do they use to produce orange? What do they use to produce anana? China doesn't have farms for this amount of tomatoes they bring here. But they are constantly shipping tomato here. Where do they get it? We have not just the raw material. We have the atmosphere and the soil that can constantly give us the assurance because Transforming process is different where you don't have a cultivating power. The strength of the transforming power is in the cultivation. We have the cultivating power, which definitely we are supposed to be the highest transformers. It is unfortunate that we are producing in huge quantities and others are transforming it for us. If you fly out of this country, African foods are very, very expensive in European supermarkets. Because it's to tell that they know that what comes from here is richer than what they are producing over there. How would you explain that an African would take a train for almost about 20 minutes to go and eat an African restaurant? It tells you how scarce. And then a plate of African meal there is very expensive because they know that what comes from this place is organic. And if the population is not eating what is healthy, Definitely, we are going to have a sick population, and equally, we are going to have a uh, how do I put it, a population that dies early. That's the truth. There are also food that can eat; it limits your production. You know, there is this campaign of reducing world population, and the focus in our, is Africa. They might not kill us directly, but they may give us products that make our spam watery and unproductive. You eat certain things and you are not able to reproduce. If 1,000 Africans go impotent or unproductive, they have indirectly reduced birth rate. That's the law of killing us. 
So if at all we are not sensitive to understand that there is a campaign against the reduction of world population and the target is Africa, we should be very, very careful with what we eat. What we, what we import into Africa. What we import in Africa. Mm -hmm. How do you explain that in those days people were working with bare body in our villages and no fellas mosquito did not kill them with malaria? Today you cover blanket under that blanket and no fellas mosquito bite you have malaria. What is the difference between that era and now? What we eat. We used to drink water in streams in the villages. You mm -hmm. won't have typhoid. Now you are drinking supposedly treated water by the Chinese. And you are sick of typhoid. Something is not well. Something is not balanced. That's the reason why we must have a food controlling unit in this country that verifies everything that enters our mouth. If not, that reduction of population will not come as coronavirus. It will not come as a plague. It will come as a slow poison through what we consume, thereby annihilating us gradually. Okay, uh, the chicken, the pork, and everything that we consume from out of, uh, out of Africa. Good evening to you all in the studio. I will, I will that uh, Pastor Ambe should be the president of this country because he speaks a lot of sense. I am Azo Simon writing from Mutengen. Good evening, Mr. Liu. Please, can you help me? And G number, I need some incubators. And Peter from Bomenda. Um, I'm confused. So, so many messages. The person with incubator, can you just contact me after the program? And those who need the incubators, can you also contact me after the program? So I will know how to, to link you guys. Good evening. I'm Reverend. I'm Reverend from Yaoundé. I just twin uh, on my TV this evening and I like the program. So I don't know how to. To your contact, okay. Um, my contact get to that uh, contact on WhatsApp. Hello, Mr. Leo. Moving from farm to market is what is killing most of us young people. I am Christian writing from Tatum. Good evening, Mr. Leo. Just to say kudos to you and your team, and also with your choice of topics, keep up. A Kule Alexander uh, from Mbengengang Sang writing from Bengui, okay thank you uh very much mr kum for the program okay hi to all in the studio tabi butengu following up from yaoundé quite an interesting program more grace uh, to you all uh, good evening to you uh good evening uh, mr leo your program is nice just that we have a very bad government that is why we are where we are bravo to apostle and be panjo writing from uh Tumbel. good evening to you uh, just to concord with Apostle Ambe, what is killing us Cameroonians is the gain some individuals made from custom duty. That is why we import rather than produce in Cameroon. Emmanuel is writing from uh, Boya. Good evening to you, Emmanuel. Good evening, Mr. Liu. I love the topic of today. I run the poetry and I need an incubator. Kindly send me the number of the listener who produce incubator. Is Yelum John writing from Yaoundé? The guy with incubator, please, can you just contact me again so that I can share your number with uh, those who need it? Good evening, Mr. Liu. I love how Apostle is hitting it hard on this agricultural topic. He needs to be appointed as the Minister of Agriculture to help us bring policies that will revamp this sector. Alex is writing from uh, Boya. Uh, congrats, Apostle Ambe. You are indeed a whole library. Do you know that Gary used to leave Baligam to Equatorial Guinea and Gabon? Indeed, we can. Derek is writing from Chang. Um, Dr. Fon, we are running out of time. I asked about uh, whether Afro, Afro brains as uh, other projects aside what we already are observing in the future. Huh? Yes. Uh Yes, of course. Afrobrains uh, has quite a, 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 a huge amount of uh, products. Like I indicated before, there are several opportunities in, in agriculture. Uh, Afrobrains is at this point in time, starting with um, the, the transformation uh, factory, we are going to also be expanding. We have agents. So um, as we speak, we have agents across Cameroon. So if anybody um, wants to uh, get the Afrobrain product, Feel free to contact us. We would we will link you up with the agents in the place where you find yourself. So as as we move ahead, we are going to be setting up um, centers um, like restaurants and um, 
and uh, uh, shops in the various um, the major cities so that people can be able to go there and actually not only consume the semi-finished product like the flour and the oil but also able to consume the finished product. Today we we hear of KFC um, in the West. There's KFC which is a, a franchise globally. Go to Europe, you go to America, you go to even here in China you have KFC all over. We want to set up um, a food chain in Cameroon and of course in Africa that will provide healthy food to the people of Africa. It is high time Cameroonians and Africans as a whole begin to realize that food is food is a matter of national security. If we do not pay attention to what we eat, then there is nothing else we should be paying attention to. Because what we are is what we eat. As, as long as uh, we, we continue to consume the food that we have, um, uh, we importing, we are going to continue to be sick. Uh, Apostle Lambe has made it very clear. He's put a lot of attention to the issue of food quality. Um, I must indicate that at Apple Brains, we have equipment that tests our raw material. So we are very keen, not just to the raw materials we buy, but to the quality of the food that we produce. Uh, when we talk about quality of the products, we are talking about the standards of the machines. There are some machines that are not food standard. Just because somebody is producing food does not mean that that food is, is, is standard food. There are specific material types. There are specific uh, things about machines that qualify that machine to transform food which is going to be edible. So yes, Apple Brains will be setting up um, uh, institutions or let's say uh, uh, shops across the country will be starting from Douala, um, Bafusam, and Limbe from our current statistics so that people can be able to have access not just to the semi-finished products but to the finished product. And as I indicated, we are setting up our complex in, in Yaoundé where we're going to have a training center to train people on how to build these small machines and of course uh, meet the, the local women in their various in their various communities to discuss with them how to cultivate food in a healthy way and how to use the small machines that are being produced to increase their yield. People who own farms and who are interested in dealing with us, I, I listen carefully to you indicate how Kangote probably stopped the importation of tomatoes into Nigeria and set up a project. Of course, if the farmers, if the tomato farmers across Cameroon have a challenge in where to sell their product, they can always get in touch with Alpha Brain. We can go into a collaboration, win-win collaboration, where they can produce in large quantities and we can transform and put this into the market so that people can begin to eat healthy food. And as I indicated, they should pay attention to the quality of the fertilizers or the manure that they use. Chemicals do not help. The fact that something is looking good is not all that glitters that is gold. So let us let us uh, uh, be able to look at quality. So Afro Brains has uh, lots and lots of other projects that are coming up. Uh, those who are interested in agriculture, those who want to build a career in agriculture, those who want to uh, be involved more in food cultivation, get in touch with us. Let us talk. There are people who want to invest in cultivation. Let us have the conversation so that we can begin to see how we can build sustainable chains. Um, we are into transformation. We support cultivation. We are, we are also looking at investing in distribution. We are setting up an online platform for people to access. Those are all a vast, a wide a scope of opportunities that are existing. So young people should realize that agriculture is the future. When you get involved in agriculture, you sustain not just your life, the life of your family, but you also sustain the life of your generation. Thank you very much. Okay, I'll take a few uh, few uh, messages and we call it for today. Good evening, Mr. Liu and all the panelists, especially my man of Wisdom Apostle Ambi. Mr. Liu, please, I just wish uh, to plead that I look towards being a panelist in such a rich topics. Please, can I be oriented on what I need to be a panelist, uh, Prince Rupert, writing from Duala Prince. Can you call me tomorrow morning? You have my number. Call me. And we discuss about that. Good evening. I'm Rudolph from Yaoundé. Agriculture is oxygen to our society. I have uh, 5,600 
three layers capacity incubators imported from China. Okay, uh, better still, Kazon building materials uh, over Facebook. Can you, those with incubators, can you just call me after the program? Oh, the best is to call me tomorrow morning by 9 10, between 9 10. If you have incubators, just call me tomorrow so that I can link you up with those who need uh, the incubators. Okay, good evening, sirs. I'm talking from Equatorial Guinea, Malabo. With what Apostle Ambe carries inside of him, in every aspect, he will make the best president ever. He flows naturally in every topic. He makes too much sense. Thanks, Mr. Liu, for this great platform. Thank you uh, very much, uh, Apostle. <laughs> uh, they want you to be president. They want you to be minister. Who knows? Mr. Liu, kudos and keep up with uh, your refined panelists. Um, Ma Bison is writing from... Uh, K Town, that's Kumba. Good evening, Mr. Liu. Greetings to you and your entire panelists. When I listen to this type of programs, I always feel as to cry. Our government will actually do nothing to encourage agriculture because they know that if people become independent, we will collect bribe from again. I, I am so tired, but let's not lose hope. The best is yet uh, to come. Mr. Liu, I'm enjoying your program. Please, for the incubator guy's number, thanks in advance. Please, who is the guy who set the ass incubator? Can you just send, uh, write me? Many messages have covered what you sent to me. Hi, good evening. We need to change the young people. It's Mr. P writing from uh, Boya. Hello, Mr. Leonard. I'm called Tanto Betran, an incubator producer based in Ndwala. My number. Oops. Good evening, Mr. Liu and the crew. I'm blessed uh, with the topic on board. In fact, when our panelists speak, my heart bleeds because of the leaders we have in this country. When the, the, when the panelists from China speak, I see with him. But how can we reason based on our environment when there are no roads networks? Agriculture cannot go without good roads. Let this government provide good roads uh, to its citizens. Okay. Um, we have to end at this juncture. We want to say thank you, Dr. Fon, for participating in today's edition of the program. Yeah, thank you very much. I really do appreciate the platform. I, I really do appreciate the effort that you're making. And I must say that I have I've watched um, um, your your programs in the past. They are very educative. Um, they, are, they are really centered around those things that affect the day-to-day the -day life of Cameroonians. So thank you very much. I've been watching uh, Apostle Lambe. Apostle Lambe, thank you. Kudos. May God bless you and continue to empower you to, to, to do more. Uh, the things you say go to change uh, impact the lives of people. Those are the type of persons we want in society. So together we're always going to see what we can do. Um, no matter how long the storm lasts, one day the sun shall finally rise. Thank you very much. Okay. And thank you to Madam Miranda for coming all the way from Yaoundina. Thank you. I want to thank you too so much for giving us this opportunity, at least, uh, to, to present to so many people the opportunities that we have. It's an honor to be here. Mm. And I also want to thank um, Apostle Lambe so much. I've learned so much from, from what he said. And I'm also, I've been watching the program. It's really educative and very interesting. Okay. I just pray God to continue to give you the strength to, to do more. Okay. Mm -hmm. We also want to say thank you to you, uh, Apostle Lambe. Anyway, this is my house, and uh, I'm, I'm falling in love with Afro brains. I don't know where they think they can fit me. I'm ready to walk. <laughs> okay. Uh, tomorrow, we are going to be looking at the Coalition for Dialogue on uh, Negotiation. We're going to be finding out what role they can play to ensure that peace and justice returns to the troubled Northwest and Southwest uh, regions. We are going to be having two uh, members of that uh, platform who are going to be contributing from out of the country. Apostle Lambe is going to join them alongside uh, another panelist uh, to look at uh, how peace and justice can uh, effectively be seen as having been done in the Northwest and Southwest regions. We want to thank you all who took time off to watch the program, the production team. Stay blessed. Bye-bye.